All right, so hi everyone, I'm Anna Olson. Um, I am the Interim Executive Director of the Center for Teaching, Research and Learning, or CTRL, as most people call it. And uh, just before we get started, I uh, just wanted to let you know that as we move through today's program, um, we would actually love for you, if you are open to it, to keep your videos on uh, so we can see each other. Uh, but at the same time, please keep yourselves muted when you're not speaking. Uh, and then feel free to post any questions in the chat at any time. Uh, we will also have a designated Q&A throughout today's session after each segment and at the end as well. Um, so to start with, um, we have a few people here who will speak to you, but I would like to invite actually my colleague Priya Doshi um, to introduce herself. Um, and um, Priya, I don't have your title in front of me right now, so I'm going to leave it over to you to, to share that with everyone. No worries. Hi, good evening, everybody. My name is Priya Doshi. I'm the Associate Dean of Faculty and Inclusive Excellence. So I work with Monica Jackson in the Provost's Office. She's the Dean of Faculty. Um, in our role, we basically manage all faculty processes, practices, um, Basically, everything to do with faculty affairs um, happens at both your school level, but also at the provost office level. So um, I will be talking to you about a couple of different items tonight, but welcome. We're really excited to have you at AU. Thank you, Priya. And I forgot to say welcome to AU, so I, I second that uh, to all of you. And um, we are actually expecting Monica to be here as well, uh, but I think that we can go ahead and jump to the next segment and then we will uh, go back to, to a few words from Monica when she joins us. So Merlin, are you by any chance with us and ready? So I'd like to introduce Merlin Ruiz McClure, who uh, is um, going to talk about um, and answer questions related to human resources and employment. And Merlin is director of uh, faculty employment at Human Resources. Merlin. Hello, everyone. Good evening. Can you all hear me OK? Yes. OK, great. Well, good evening. So nice to uh, meet you all virtually. I know that I recognize um, some names on the participant list. Uh, welcome to American University. I know uh, I've spoken to a few of you either interacted via Teams or email. Um, I, I am going to share my screen if I'm allowed, and then let me, let me see if I can. Yes, you should be able to, Merlin. Okay. Um, let me see if I, I tell me that I can't, let me see. Okay, can you see that? Yes. I, I took, I took it off the presentation mode, it seemed to allow me. But these are the, uh, this is my team in human resources. We are the HR faculty team. It's myself, Katie Mackay, Mikia Cordell, and Angelise Guerrero. Uh, so you may interact with one of them um, during this new hire phase. Um, and we do split up between full-time and uh, adjunct faculty and also between schools. So as you can see on the screen, Katie uh, takes care of the uh, full-time faculty members for CIS, SIS, and SOE. Mikia handles the full-time faculty members for the remaining of the schools. And Angelis Guerrero, the adjunct uh, faculty members. Um, so you may have received some information, some welcome emails, uh, contracts, appointment offer letters uh, from one of um, a member of the team. Um, we're here to assist you during your new hire process, um, your onboarding, um, your I-9, anything. And of course, you know, we have our brand new system, Workday. Um, and so we're here to answer any questions when it comes to that. A couple of things that I will mention that are really important, especially for the new hire process, is the I-9 verification. And so um, all of you here should have um, already created your account with American University, which will also allow you to log in to Workday. If you have any issues whatsoever, please reach out to me. Um, I can try and assist you. We can contact our OIT help desk if there are any issues, but we can help you uh, log in. When you log into Workday, you will see a, a little uh, mailbox icon on the top right of your screen. And that's your inbox screen. And that's the first place you need to go to to begin your onboarding. So you'll have a series of tasks that you will uh, be asked to complete, personal information, taxes, and so on. But the one of the ones that I want to talk about is your I-9 employment verification. Um, you will ask to, you know, complete that form, which is called section one, but section two has to be done in person. You have to present some acceptable documents 
documents in person. And so I wanted to put up the Human Resources Office address here. We are open Monday to Friday, 9 to 5. There's no appointments necessary for uh, in-person verification. So if you're going to be on campus, that's probably the easiest thing. Uh, but it does have to be done within three days of your start date. So for full-time faculty members, that was very important because usually that, be, you know, your start would be the beginning of this month. So we would, um, if you have not done this part already, please make sure you come into HR as soon as possible. Um, for our adjunct faculty members, your start date most likely is January 8th or possibly January 16th. So you want to make sure that you are um, coming to see us as soon as possible. Uh, we are able to do virtual appointments, which is something new and we're really excited about. And so I did put the link up here and I can put it in the chat for you to be able to get more information on I-9s, but also to set up an appointment virtually. Um, and so um, it is a, a Teams call or a Zoom call where you will be showing us virtually your acceptable documents and we'll also ask you to upload them onto Workday. So any questions, any access issues that you may have, please let me know right away. I'm, I'm happy to, to help. Um, and then um, just a couple of other important links. Um, if there's anything here, I can I can add them to the chat as well. Um, you know, HR payroll, our payroll schedules. Um, benefit overview, and then a couple of adjunct faculty HR sites that are, are here to assist you. There's just so much information in our website. Um, definitely, I, I would be happy to guide you to the right place if you have a specific question. And, uh, and for our full-time faculty members that are joining us, um, part of the onboarding process when you do join, when you do log on to Workday will be uh, to select your benefits. And that's also a, a very important because there is a time limit for that. Those of you that are starting January 1st, um, you do have, uh, I think it's a little bit less than 30 days or 30 days to be able to enroll, but that's something that right away, if you want to do that right away, please, uh, we encourage you to do so. I did list uh, my colleagues here from the benefits team that could assist you with specific questions regarding the benefits that you're selecting. But of course, you know, in HR, the HR faculty team, we were your first, you know, point of contact when it comes to HR. So please reach out to uh, one of us and we can either assist you. And if we don't know the answer, then we would definitely guide you to one of our uh, team members in benefits. Um, and I think that's it for my part. Um, I know for with Workday, uh, you know, it's it's a new system. It's very modern. We're very excited. But a lot of the different systems that we used to have that I used to talk about during orientation really have just been uh, are now part of Workday. And so everything, it's a, a one place. That inbox will show you the way of the different tasks that you have to uh, take care of during your first uh, your first week, your first few days. So please let me know if you have any questions. And I'm gonna put up here um, my email address. And like I said, after my segment, I will make sure to drop these emails and links in the chat for you all to have. Any questions at all? I have a question. Yeah. Does this apply if you're already an AU employee? employee I'm sorry. Um, so if you were already, for example, like a staff member now are um, going to be joining as an adjunct faculty member, would that be? Yes, that's correct. Okay, so no, so you won't have to onboard. Um, that um, that part will not, I think the only um, maybe new thing that you may have to uh, um, have to make sure that you have access to is Canvas and, uh, you know, the teaching um uh, systems that you may need. But when it comes to HR and your personnel, you don't have to do any of that. Okay, thank you. Sure. What is your office for walk-ins? For walk-ins for the I-9 verification? Yes. Uh, let, let me put that up again. This is our HR office. We're located in New Mexico Avenue next to the Wag Shawls and the Chef Jeff's restaurant. And we are open Monday to Friday, 9 to 5. Thank one, you. One question I had is on the I-9 for adjuncts. Um, is there going to be a task sent to the workday? I have not received anything on that. Okay. Yes, there will be. One of the tasks, um, and they are sometimes they come in order, so you have to complete one for the other task to open up. Um, but I'm happy to look into your file to see if there's anything that may be preventing your your uh, the task to be sent to your inbox. Um, let me see. It's uh, uh, Jay uh, Lerner. Yeah, yeah. I had initially had troubles getting into Workday. I 
think I've worked through that. Um, and but I'm not, still not seeing an I nine task or any of that. Are you seeing any tasks when you go into your inbox? Um, it's based on the changes that I made on benefits and um, beneficiaries and things like that, but nothing more than what I've already initiated. Okay. All right. Sounds good. Let me take a look at this, uh, Jay, and I will send you an email um, with more information. Okay. Yeah, I had left Angelisa a message about this, so um, not to double up, but just to let you know. Sure. No, I'm, I'm happy to help. Thanks. Um, Hi, Marilyn. I apologize. Yeah. I apologize for joining late, but I'm in, I think I'm in the exact same situation. I haven't received the task either. Okay, let me see. It's not showing me who, who is speaking. So if you can give me your name, I can write it down and, and look uh, for your task. Sorry, I'm Greg Store, S-T-O-H-R. Okay, so let me find out your status and where your task is. And I'll also let you know, Greg. Okay, thank you. Absolutely. Actually, let me stop sharing so that way I can see who's talking. There we go. <laughs> I'm sorry, who? I, I see several hands up. Um, Claire? Do you want to go ahead and just call a name? Marlon, sure. I don't yeah. See you. Yes, now that I can see everyone, now it's better. So Claire uh, Burke? Uh, yes, hello. Thank you. Um, my question is, I, I'm a graduate student and um, I have a student ID number and so I haven't been able to log into Workday. And when I called the help desk, they said it was probably because of that. Do I need to do anything in lieu of signing up for Workday? No, you, you definitely need to sign up for Workday. And so they said uh, it was due to the student account. Were they able, did they talk about converting your account to a faculty account? I don't think they can convert it because I'm an active student. I, I, I don't know. The, basically, they just said, well, you have a student ID and there's no way, I don't know if they'd have to, you'd have to generate a new number for me or something. Okay. And I see Veronica um, nodding her head. Is that your situation uh, as well? I just graduated like in, in December, but I have the same problem. I have my student ID and my student email and it's not allowing me to access. And also I put in the chat and I think it's a problem with a couple of people that we're trying to schedule an I-9 verific verification appointment. And it's okay. like, it, it's a zero in the system. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, that's good to know. Oh, so, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Let me look into both. Um, I'm going to need guidance on the student uh, side of it. Um, I mean, you have access to the AU portal as a student, mm -hmm. so you have your email. Um, so I'm going to have for to example see what, in Canvas, yeah. I only have access to like my past classes, and I can't access, for example, my teacher. Like, uh, yeah. I, I can only access it as a student. So yeah, that's, okay. that's the problem. And right? by chance, you know, the account creation link, um, when you go in, have you, have you tried to initiate a create account, but using your personal email address? No, I haven't. Um, I don't know. Yeah, maybe I should do that. Because like I, I was told like when I uh, when I got the offer that I should still use my same ID and my same mail. So that's I wasn't yeah. sure if I should use like my personal one. Yeah. Okay, let me get back to you, Veronica and Claire Thank on you. that. Let me find out more. Okay, Thank and you. then let's see, I have Julie. Uh, yes, hi. Hi, Julie, um, how are you? I'm great, how are you? Great, thank you. Um, so I have a question. I uh, was I received an offer, but I do not have a class to teach yet. I haven't been assigned a class. Do I, I guess my question is, what is my start date? Uh, is that when I get assigned a class? Is it, should I proceed as though it's now? I'm not sure what to do. Sure, um, sure. Yeah. Usually the standard hire date for the spring is January uh, 8th. And so once you receive those tasks in your Workday inbox, when you're able to uh, sign up and once you're able to um, create your AU account, I would just proceed and finish all the tasks to your I-9 until you wait for that, that course to be assigned to you. Okay, so, so basically move forward with everything and then just await the, the course assignment. That's correct. Yes. Okay. Thank you. No problem. I would, I would add, Julie, you should probably reach out to your dean to be sure you have a class. So just reach out to your dean about your class as well. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, and Aresh, I see your hand is up. Yes. Uh, just bring it down. And thank you so much for helping me with the onboarding. I've been in communication with you. Yes, of course. Yes. Nice to meet you virtually. Yes. Uh, and uh, I just have a question. So the class has been assigned to me. I can access it in the canvas, but 
I don't know where the class is actually located. Is that something that comes from the department, like which building, which? Yes, I, I would not have that information. So I would encourage you to reach out to your department, um, your school to find out the details of the class. Um, I don't know if there's somebody else on the call that would have better information for you. Thank you. And yeah, sure. I can I can answer that question for you, Arash. So if you go into the AU portal and you look under the academics tab, so you have to log into your portal, mm -hmm. look under the academics tab, look at my course rosters. And okay. in your course roster, it will tell you the location of your classroom as well. Okay well as who's enrolled in your class. It may also be on your Canvas page, but I think the roster is the place to find it for sure. Okay. And uh, it's my first semester teaching at AU. And uh, so like none of my letters that I received kind of indicated the, the the pay that I would receive as an adjunct. I mean, uh, I with GMU, the letter kind of indicated like this is the, like whatever I'm going to get for every course. So. Uh, I mean, I know how much I'm going to get, but there's nothing on the paper. Is that like how it is with AU? Or? It, it's it's the same. I haven't gotten anything and I've been waiting for um, something like that. Is is Bill Leo Grant on the call? Is he here? Not yet. I don't think so. Okay. When he comes, you all should ask him that. He's the one who signs your, your contracts for that. So he'll be able to tell you where to find that. Okay. All right. Thank you so much. Of course. Any other questions? I don't think I see any other uh, hands on here, but if I'm missing, please let me know. Nope, I, I don't think so. Um, thank you, everybody. It was so nice to meet you. I Oh, I see one hand came up, Marissa. Yeah, this is Marissa. Thanks so much. So um, Workday, is that just um, accessed through the A Successful U tab, or is there some other way we should be accessing Workday? Yeah, so once you have your account created, your AU account created, you can um, access Workday through the link. I believe it's in the AU portal. Also, the American site has another link on that. What I'll do is I'll, I'll add that to the chat so all of you are um, have that link and you can bookmark it. Uh, but it is not through the A Successful U uh, site. Uh, we will be steering away from that site um, eventually. So um, let me put that on the chat, Marissa, so you have that link. Okay, great. Yeah, because I'm not really sure where to access the workday through the MyAU. Sounds good. And I'll so I'll, I'm going to drop a lot of links right now in the chat. I'll put a title for them, but there is also another um, another site in case we do run into technical issues with Workday. We have a Workday support site, and so that's also an important one to to bookmark uh, for future. All right. Thank you Sounds so much. Great. Marilyn. No problem. Thank you, everyone. Yeah. Have a and have a great evening. Thank you. We're going to be sharing this PowerPoint presentation and the chat information as well with everyone. So um, you'll be able to contact Merlin with any additional questions. Thank you so much for joining us. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. And now we, I, it's actually my pleasure uh, to, to uh, welcome um, Monica Jackson, who is Deputy Provost and Dean of Faculty, to say a few words to all of you. Welcome, Monica. Hi, thank you. And I'm so sorry for being late, you all, but I am happy to be here to welcome you to American University. Um, I'm the Deputy Provost and, and Dean of Faculty here, and I've, I've been here for a while, about 19 years now, and um, been teaching mainly in the math stat department uh, until I became an administrator. But I'll be working with you on a number of things this year, um, from Sissy with learning about a U to connecting you with other faculty and resources, but in doing some professional development activities, you'll have a chance to interact with me and the provost. We'll be sending an invite for you all to meet with us to be sure how things are going for you here at AU. But um, I also do quite a bit of DI work across campus, so I'm looking forward to sharing with you. Um, so um, please be sure to reach out for me, to me at any time if you have any questions. You've been working with quite a bit my team already, but be been in contact likely with Bill Leogrand as you um, process your, your paperwork. But if anything comes up, reach out to myself. Um, I know you probably met Priya already. We're always happy to help you all. Thank you so much, Monica. So um, right now we're supposed to go into two breakout rooms and the host for one of the breakout groups is not here yet. So I think what I would like to suggest is that we still go into the two rooms. So we have, I'm gonna just pull up my screen so that you know, um, we will um, 
go into two rooms, one for adjunct faculty and uh, the other one for term faculty. Um, so Priya Doshi is going to join the term faculty and talk about faculty service. And uh, I think what I'll do, I will join the other um, group and um, in case Bill is able to join us, um, he can join that group. Maybe Lindsay, you can stay in the main room and, and let him know. And, uh, and otherwise, I, you know, I, I can just answer any other questions you might have uh, in the meantime, or you can take a break. I think we, we're a little bit behind the schedule. So maybe what we can do is take about 10 minutes. Uh, Priya, will that give you enough time? That will, and Anna, I was going to suggest yeah. if you wanted to give Bill a little bit more time, we could flip the order and I could run through oh. the Inclusive Excellence Plan first. That is a great idea. Let's do that. Why don't we do that? Let's flip the order and, and Priya will talk about AU's Inclusive Excellence Plan um, which and, and how it impacts your work. So um, let's. I'm going to stop sharing so that you can share your screen and then we'll go back to the other step later. Thank you. I'm just going to make sure it's the right one because I've got a lot of PowerPoints open at the moment. Oh, yeah. Okay. Can you all see my screen? Yes. Could you make it full screen, Priya? Is that possible? Yes, absolutely. So just getting rid of these little boxes in my way. How's that? That's perfect. Thank you. Okay, excellent. So um, so I mentioned in my title that I'm the Associate Dean of Faculty. I work with Monica, but the other part of my title is Inclusive Excellence. Um, so let me sort of begin with what is Inclusive Excellence. Uh, I'm not sure whether any of you have heard the term, but uh, American University is um, a huge supporter of Inclusive Excellence. It's really imbued into everything that we do. Um, and it really is based on our ability to respond to the needs of a changing world with the key values of diversity, equity, and inclusion. Um, you'll hear, you probably will hear President Burwell say it at one time or another that we cannot be truly inclusive without being, uh, I'm sorry, we can't be truly excellent without being inclusive. Um, we really see it as a fabric of our, um, of the way that we do everything. And with it comes a very um, detailed inclusive excellence plan, which I will have provided a link to in my last slide that provides the concrete specific steps that we're taking to ensure that AU is an inclusive of environment. Um, we also want to emphasize that we don't see this as a top-down initiative. We really see it as everybody's job to think about ways that they can make our learning environment, our working environment, a more inclusive place. All right, so the IE plan, which I mentioned before, the Inclusive Excellence Plan has five main goals to it. And underneath their goals, there are a number of action items, which we won't get into that level of detail here. But just to run through sort of the five broad goals, the first is learning curriculum and professional development. And so this really has to do with how our students experience AU, how we as faculty lead our students in their experiences at AU, um, and also our own professional development. So there's a number of initiatives under here around ways to make um, pedagogy more inclusive, ways to think about how to diversify uh, your curriculum. Um, and there's a great deal of support for this. CTRL, who is putting on this wonderful orientation, has a number of programs throughout this semester that are open to all faculty to attend that really focus on concepts of inclusive excellence. And they also have inclusive pedagogy fellows um, who are faculty members who are hired specifically to help faculty with questions they have about how to make their teaching approach and their curriculum more inclusive. The second main goal in the IE plan is campus culture, climate, and community. And this really ties well to a strategic focus at AU, which is we want it to be a place where faculty, staff, and students all want to be and where they can actually thrive. So um, a lot of this is really focused on how do people experience AU from all levels, um, and the action items are pertaining to fostering a sense of belonging. The third priority is policies and practices. And so a lot of that pertaining to faculty have to do with how we hire and how we retain faculty. Um, and so in the hiring piece, one of the things that um, our office does is we um, do these periodic briefings for all search committees on inclusive practices and hiring, because we really want to emphasize to them that we want the best candidate by casting the widest net for every position that we fill at American. Um, in addition, we have a number of mentoring and belonging 
belonging um, types of activities for fact faculty. Some of that is through the advance grant that we have from the National Science Foundation, and I'll mention a bit more about that in a minute. Um, but also a lot of it comes through CTRL, and it comes through the kinds of events that, for example, Monica was just mentioning, where the provost and the dean of faculty will convene faculty for a variety of different opportunities to hear from you. Um, the, the, th the fourth is access and equity. Um, and again, this is about really about making sure that everybody at AU has access to the same kind of opportunities and the same kinds of experiences. Um, and it, it has to do with um, a wide range of things pertaining to inclusion, including, for example, disability access, um, access for people of different income levels, et cetera. So our definition of inclusive excellence goes much wider than what people often think of as gender and race or, or um, ethnicity, but really into all of the areas of, um, of you know, of, of identity um, for people. And then lastly, research scholarship and creative work. So, you know, we definitely look fondly upon and support greatly faculty's efforts to um, imbue their own research and their scholarly activities with a focus on diversity, equity, and inclusion, whether that's in thinking about um, who's included in your research projects, you know, what kind of resources you're using, um, who is benefiting from your research. Um, this is stuff that we're really trying to integrate into our uh, promotion and reappointment guidelines. Um, so it's, you know, that's underway at the moment. And so it's a very strong focus of what we're doing in terms of our IE plan. Um, a couple of the other things on the right that I wanted to mention in the blue box, I've already talked about CTRL, Inclusive Pedagogy Fellows, but we also have faculty and staff affinity groups. There's a link for that on my last page. Um, and we highly encourage you to check these out. I believe we have six or seven of them now. So everything ranging from LGBTQIA um, affinity groups to international to black identifying faculty to veterans. Um, and that's a really great opportunity to meet others on campus who identify similarly to you. We also have a name and gender ID policy. So anybody at AU, faculty, staff, or student can um, declare their, their the name that they go by as well as the gender that they identify with. Um, and the name coach is a really cool um, thing that you can um, access, which allows you to pronounce your name verbally. So somebody can listen to the pronunciation of your name. So hopefully you can prevent future butchering of your name. As somebody with a name that's hard to pronounce, I really appreci appreciate name coach. Um, so I wanted to make you aware of that. Um, and then also a great resource for you are the school-based inclusion leads. So every school at AU has an inclusion lead. I was formerly the inclusion, inclusion lead for the School of Communication, where I am a faculty member. Um, and they are really great resources for finding out what your school is doing pertaining to inclusive excellence and DEI. Um, so I encourage you to check them out. And I provided their names on the last slide as well. And then I mentioned to you the National Science Foundation's advance grant. This is an effort to really increase career pathways and sense of belonging for STEM faculty. And we, we um, identify STEM faculty as those in the social sciences as well. So this really pertains to more than 50% of all AU faculty across the board. I'm going to pause there and ask if there are any questions before I move on to my last resource slide. Okay. All right. So on this last page, you'll see some links, um, as I mentioned. And again, um, as Anna said, we're sharing the slides with you, but you can check out the Inclusive Excellence Plan. CTRL um, is a website that I would highly recommend you bookmark because, and want to return to over and over again. So in addition to events, they also do a, a great number of um, resources on that page um, to find out more about the faculty staff affinity groups and the advance grant. Those links are also there. In the center column, you'll see the names of all of the inclusion leads at all of the schools. Um, and then finally, the university level inclusion leads are me and my colleague, Amanda Taylor, who is the associate assistant vice president of IE. And I'm very delighted to announce that we're also about to have our new VP of inclusive excellence begin. Her name is Nikenji Friday, and she begins next week. Um, so thank you. And please do let me know if you have any questions. There's another opportunity to ask, and I will stop my share so I can see you. Thank you so much, Bria. Any questions? from anyone. So Priya, I'm wondering what I could do is I could go over the segment about CTRL's resources. It takes about 10 minutes if you have time to stay. Otherwise, we could go into the breakout groups and um, and then I will do that after, just depending on your, your schedule, because Bill isn't here yet. Um, I'm fine with staying. Yeah, that's yeah. fine. Mm -hmm. Right. 
All right, so then let me go ahead and share my screen again, and um, we will skip to uh, the last segment, which will not be the last, but let's see. Here we go. Right, so um, I just have to move some things out of the way here so I can actually see. Um, here we go. So I would like to start. So again, uh, the Center for Teaching, Research and Learning, um, or CPRL, some people call it the Control Center. We don't like that because we are not in control. Uh, we are here to help. So I think that's where the, uh, actually the naming came from, the idea of the control, uh, the CTRL plus key on the keyboard as a shortcut. Um, so we are essentially your shortcut to learning and, and finding your way around American University. Uh, I, go back there quickly to the mission. Um, so um, CTRL's mission, um, it's, a, it's a pretty straightforward and simple one to promote excellence in teaching and scholarship at American University. Um, of course, this directly translates to supporting you, our faculty, in these endeavors. Uh, and since it's a bit, pretty broad mandate, I, I'm going to spend actually most of my time uh, in the next 10 minutes or so talking about how CTRL carries out this mission in the realm of teaching support. Um, with uh, just a particular focus on what we do and want to do to support you. Um, so I uh, first want to introduce my colleagues, some of whom are on this call. So uh, this is us. Um, our team consists of uh, four teaching and learning specialists, two research methodologists, a team uh, working specifically on diversity, equity, and inclusion, and a team managing all of our programs and events. Um, and we also have, you. I'm sure you'll get a chance to meet all of these wonderful individuals in the next semester. Uh, we also have 15 faculty fellows, um, and they are all faculty at American University who work with us to support our mission by holding and organizing workshops, advising faculty on topics of diversity, equity, and inclusion, uh, and also working on some research on teaching and learning, so scholarship of teaching and learning, uh, and a variety of other things. Um, to go over to the next slide here, CTRL's teaching support um, falls into three main categories. First, we have three big teaching conferences uh, every year, slightly different format. So the August faculty workshops are a three-day professional development conference for faculty that um, is designed to prepare you for the fall semester, essentially. Uh, the Ann Farring conference, which I'm very excited to announce, actually, uh, if if you haven't seen it in any of the email invitations, uh, this is our biggest conference of the year, uh, typically with uh, nearly or almost over 500 participants. Uh, it's going to be held for the 35th year this year, uh, this coming Thursday and Friday. Um, and um, we have just a lot of faculty coming in to give presentations uh, and to uh, interact with each other. It's a really exciting conference, uh, as, as those of you on the call who have been there before can probably attest to. Um, and I strongly encourage you, if you haven't already, to, to register for the conference. It's free to attend, um, and it's uh, a fully virtual conference on Thursday and a hybrid conference on Friday. So you can actually come in to campus on Friday and join us for a, a lunch uh, if you are able to. Um, and then we have the third conference style event here, the May Faculty Workshops, which you may be available for uh, later this spring. This is a series of half day or day long institutes and short workshops for faculty that are designed to enable more in-depth learning uh, and preparation for summer teaching, uh, for research projects uh, and other things like that. Uh, the topics vary from year to year. It's typically between, I would say, five and 10 different institutes. And then we also have a number of other types of workshops and events. Um, we have our teaching and pedagogy workshops, which are hosted by our teaching and learning specialists. And these are typically hands-on workshops on various topics related to teaching. Uh, they're held up, uh, up to about 10, eight or nine, 10 times per semester. I think this time we have nine. Um, we also have the Critical Perspectives on Teaching and Learning series, headed up by Brian McGowan. Uh, and uh, in this series, uh, we exclusively talk about uh, inclusive and anti-racist pedagogy and various aspects thereof. And then our research methods talks are run by our research methodologists. For those of you who are engaged in actively in, in research, um, they teach and discuss methodological or other aspects of the research pro uh, process 
this semester. I believe we have seven scheduled. Um, and then a new series from this fall uh, is the Artificial Intelligence and Teaching series. And uh, we launched this because of the recent and rapid development of AI and the impact on our work. And uh, this series consists of both hands-on workshops uh, and also informal coffee chats where you can share information, ask questions, and just discuss your experiences with, with AI uh, in your teaching and research. And these are, um, we alternate in-person and then virtual format for those. Um, so hopefully you'll be able to join us with some of those this spring as well. And then finally, we have some ad hoc events. These are often co-sponsored with other offices, uh, bringing guest speakers to campus, or they might have the purpose of providing a space for faculty to discuss topics that uh, come up through current events. Um, and all of these events that are listed on this slide are advertised on our website, which we encourage you to explore, uh, but also on social media. You can see the handle up there in the right top right corner. Um, you will also always get an email invitation. We, we find that receiving emails about our events is still the most preferred option of finding out. So you'll see those in your inboxes. Keep an eye out for emails from ctrl at american.edu. And I should say too, since there are many adjuncts on the call, uh, that to be mindful of, of the schedules of many of our adjunct faculty who work full-time jobs during the day, we hold some of our workshops during the evening hours. And we will typically also make them available via live, live stream. If they are in person, they will also be live streamed, so hybrid. Uh, and then also as video recordings that you can watch um, at a later time. All right, so we do have some additional programs I want to mention. And um, actually, before I get there, I forgot one of the most important ones. So we do have one-on-one um, -on -one teaching consultations. Actually, I should also mention we have one-on-one -on -one research consultations as well uh, that you can schedule. Uh, Lindsay, I don't know if you have, if you're able to set to maybe post the, the link in the chat uh, to the consultations page. Um, and so this is essentially a possibility for any faculty member to request a consultation one-on-one -on -one with one of our teaching and uh, learning specialists or research methodologists to discuss uh, and, and get help with any topic related to your teaching and research. And it's, uh, it's a huge resource uh, and I highly recommend that you you use it, even if you have a small question uh, about something uh, on your syllabus or something that comes up in class. It's a really, really valuable experience. And uh, now I can get to the next slide here. So in addition to these programs, we um, also have a few programs I just want to mention in addition. So we do occasionally, periodically host faculty learning communities. Um, if you have participated in uh, any of those before, you know that there are small groups of faculty who meet regularly uh, to create a space for in-depth discussion and learning about a specific topic. So we've hosted those on a variety of topics in the, in the, in the past, and, and um, I believe we might have some coming up this spring as well. So keep an eye out for invitations to those. And then finally, our green teaching program, which is a program through which faculty can earn points for teaching sustainably and get certified as green teachers. Uh, and the reward is a logo that looks like this that you uh, can put on your Canvas course page and syllabus. Um, and I should say, we actually have over 900 AU faculty members who have been certified at least once since we launched this program in 2008. So it's pre a pretty comprehensive program and students actually tend to really like it. Um, so you might actually hear from a student uh, who has another green course uh, encouraging you to uh, to get certified. And it's a pretty easy process. I would say it takes about 10 minutes. You can qualify for different levels. So it, it's, it's we're setting the bar pretty low to get the one Apple level just to reward every action, essentially. Uh, it, it's definitely a, um, a, you know, a team process. And, and we've achieved quite a, quite a, a, a number of, of actions at AU as a result of this program. So I encourage you to I get certified. You can um, learn more about the program and apply at american.edu slash ctrl slash green dot cfm. So the link should be in the chat there as well. And um, so in addition to all of these programs, just want to mention briefly, and Priya mentioned some of these already, that we do have a, a really comprehensive resources website. Uh, so just the faculty resources website in general, but specifically in terms of teaching, the teaching support website where you can find numerous resources on course development and design, 
on uh, equitable teaching, uh, on assessment and grading, and also on professional development, such as developing a teaching portfolio, which I know many of you are probably uh, going to be asked to do or, or, or have an interest in doing. Um, so I encourage you to explore this website. Uh, if you see something you think, or if you, you miss something on there, a resource you think we should be providing, we would love your feedback. Uh, we are continuously working on building up more resources uh, and also always looking for faculty input on our programming. So uh, you'll see that every post event evaluation uh, has a question also asking you what topics you would be interested in learning more about. So uh, please let us know. We would like to know how we can help you. You can also reach out directly by email. Here is our email address, ctrl at american.edu. It's easy to remember. Um, so like I said, we want to know how we can support you in your teaching and scholarship. And I hope I will hear from uh, and see many of you in our upcoming events, hopefully at the Ampere and Conference later this week. Uh, and then really quickly before we move on uh, to um, what might be the breakout session, even though I don't see build here yet, but um, I wanted to just briefly mention also, put on my other hat, because I am a co-chair of one of these affinity groups, the international one, in case you did not detect my accent. Um, and we have eight groups, actually. So this is a growing number, and it's a really exciting uh, thing. They, they have not been around for very long, but it's created a huge opportunity to to build community and to, um, to get to know faculty and staff around campus who might share interests. Um, and um, it's also actually become a really wonderful cross-sectional space where we work a lot together in these different groups and, and create uh, events and spaces together, um, support each other. Uh, and I, I really encourage you to explore um, coming to some of these events and, and possibly joining some of these groups if you are interested. So that link is there as well on that slide. I believe yeah, you shared it as well. So it's a bit redundant here, but I just want to put in an extra plug because these are great. Um, all right, so I think what we can do now, um, 6.15, so we do have, we have another half hour, so we could, we could go into, I actually want to stop also and ask him before I move on, if there are any questions specifically pertaining to what I just told you about CTRL, um, so let's do that, let's, I'm going to go ahead and stop, just bring up that mandatory Q&A slide, and then I'm going to stop sharing, so questions for me about CTRL or um, about anything else that you've learned. I know that there's a lot of information and um, you can always come back if you if you uh, have more questions. Um, so CTRL at American.edu is the email address. So feel free to raise your hand or put it in the chat. Any questions? All right. So here's I, what we could do, uh, Priya. I think I think we could actually let's go ahead and launch the breakout 